The Great Salt Lake is the crown jewel of the Pacific Flyway. It's, a, um, it's an amazing wetland, uh, unbelievable. And the food source that drives the whole thing, and I'm talking as important as shrimp to the Gulf of Mexico, is something called Sago Pondweed, principal food source of swans. Swans are the epitome of hunters as conservationists. Because of that sago pond weed, they were eating themselves out of house and home. And the biologists figured out back in the 50s, they needed to put a little hunting pressure on them to make them move on down so they'd have some food reserve when they came back in the spring. I'm a wildlife biologist for the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. I've been manager of waterfowl management areas for over 15 years. In Utah, we grow a plant called sago pondweed in all of our impoundments, and it's a submergent vegetation, and that is what attracts tundra swans, and it benefits all waterfowl. So typically in waterfowl management areas adjacent to the Great Salt Lake, we'll peak around 50,000 tundra swans in the fall. The reason we are hunting swans is actually because back in the 50s and 60s, the swans ate all of the sago pondweed in the fall, and when they returned in the spring, they were not finding enough resources to put the fat needed to finish their migration. The money generated from swan hunting is given back to managers and different projects are done on the ground to improve habitat for swans and all waterfowl. The hunters are actually helped conserving swans by hunting them and keeping them on their migration path to California in the fall. They need to eat as much sago pondweed in the spring as possible so they have the energy reserves to make it back to the tundra and return in good shape for breeding. Why hunt swans? Because they're a huge, they're recognized as the largest North American waterfowl species. They're big, they're elegant, and they're special. They're special because you can't just go hunt them anywhere like a mallard duck. Unbelievable how beautiful this is. Look at this. We're in some enchanted wonderland. You know, we set up on swans, uh, worked with my buddy Chad Yamani up here, and it was an amazing hunt. It was eight or nine o'clock in the morning, well after shooting time, but that's fine. We knew they were gonna be trading in this corridor. We put out what I would guess to be a half acre of decoys in a nice formation, and we started calling to swans. Dang. While we were waiting on a nice adult swan to come in, we enjoyed uh, the, the rest of the waterfowl traffic. First bird off the deck. I hear a Canada goose and I look. And from as far as I can see, I have to squint to see this bird. He is locked up right into the decoys. Hey. Um, and it really was, it really was a treat that uh, we had some redheads come by, some nice redheads and some canvas backs. Nice shot. What you got there, Char Dog? The amazing thing about a decoy swan, you've got this great big school bus sized white bird, five or six foot wingspan, catch your mitt size paddles folded down like rudders coming in and when he turns, when he starts responding and turning and you, and you get to really, you get to really enjoy it. Unlike a teal coming in the decoys, you get to sit and watch and savor it because again, it's coming down to one play, one trigger pull. Oh, get right there. It's a 
big white bird, isn't it? Come on this way, come on this way. Here we go, you ready? Oh, beautiful. You get that? Hey, That's one way to do But swans aren't the only thing to come to Utah for. We also got to experience something I, that was personally on my bucket list, which was the classical Great Salt Lake layout hunt in a massive spread of black silhouettes. And what they do is they stick the, the black silhouettes to make this massive spread of silhouettes and they lay among it in these little, these little layout boats. It's, it's extremely effective. Uh, the principal species out in that part of the world are the green winged teal. Uh, they and the shovelers are now, this time of year, going out into the salt water to feed on brine shrimp eggs. But we shot green wing shovelers and golden eyes, and they were in your face. I know I missed several uh, because they were too close. You know, that's one of my many excuses for missing, by the way. I've been all over the world, but the several times I've hunted here in this region, I always marvel at how beautiful it is. I, I you know, and every time I'm sitting ankle deep or knee deep in this marsh, I, I just, I think to myself, this is one of the most beautiful places on earth I've ever been. I really do love this part of the world. It, it is, it is, it is something very, very special. And uh, it goes to prove that the next great hunt is closer than you think. You really don't have to go all the way around the world to experience something truly special.